This conference will now be recorded. All right, well, welcome, and I appreciate the fact that you're willing to spend some time with me to discuss our products. We have some that we are quite proud of, and we think they will serve uh, nicely in your market. Uh, as you know, uh, Diego Stephanie is in your market, and, and in fact, I'll be there Friday, uh, next Friday. And uh, so if there was any opportunity where between now and then you had a customer that wanted to uh, discuss some things or see a to be live, you know, uh, we can do it. I, I refer to it as a face mask to face mask meeting. It's not face to face anymore. You know? <laughs> yeah. But it's always an opportunity to, to do these webinars whenever you want it. Uh, first, before I introduce uh, anything other than myself, I think I'll start with myself. So my name is Jack Bartell. I'm manager of technical services for North America for Olympia Splendid. I have been in the HVAC industry for 50 years. And as you can see, I worked 16 years for York International. 10 of those 16 years was in Norman, Oklahoma, where they manufacture all their commercial products. My last role with them was director of training. And then I spent 15 years with Value Added Distributors, which is their, York's second largest distributor in the country. So uh, I had a staff of nine service managers there. We had 20 branches. And uh, when I decided it was time for a change, I went to work for Olympia Splendid. Prior to uh, uh, York, I worked 10 years with a, uh, a mid-size commercial and residential plumbing and heating company where I was service manager in sales. And then I took nine years when I first got into the business to basically learn my trade. I currently sit on... Uh, four national committees, NATE, PARA, RCS, and ACCA. So if you ever have questions regarding anything to do with those four entities, don't hesitate to call me because I can certainly grease the wheels to get whatever answer you might need or any help you might need with any of those organizations. Okay. Then uh, you can see the phone, my, uh, my email address you see up there, as well as my phone number, the 800 number we use. Now, that 800 number just rings directly to my cell phone. So you can save the middleman and just dial my cell phone if there's ever anything you want to reach me about. Feel free to call me whenever you need. And in addition to telling people what my background is, I also like to, I don't, I don't work all the time. I also like to fish when I'm not working. So fishing is what I do. And uh, just if, if, you know, in case you're confused, in all of those pictures, I'm the guy with the glasses on, okay? <laughs> I'll be open to let you take me out and train me on that as well. Well, so uh, this is my current boat. It's a 27-foot sailfish that I take 60 to 70 miles offshore for tuna, mahi-mahi, and uh, other select delectables. Uh, and if you come to Virginia for whatever reason, give me a call we will schedule a meeting on the boat. <laughs> there you go. Then I can charge all the fuel to Diego as a business expense. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but actually this boat is on the market. I'm hoping it'll be gone in the next couple of weeks. And I've already purchased, although I can't get it until I get, uh, until I sell mine, is this will be my new ride starting in a couple of weeks. That's oh, nice. really nice. So that's a 30 foot Hydrosport that my intent starting in December will be to uh, drive this uh, uh, down the intercoastal to Florida and spend four months in Florida a year because I no longer have any interest in winter. <laughs> <laughs> but that boat I've actually been on multiple times, it's owned by a friend of mine and uh, I've slept overnight on it multiple times out in the middle of the ocean and it is one hardy vessel, I can tell you that. It's nice. So uh, again, that's just my background. Just, uh, you know, I think it's always good to know who someone is. <laughs> so uh, before we talk about product, we'll talk just briefly about the company. So Olympia Splendid is not a Johnny come lately to the HVAC world. They have been manufacturing heating and air conditioning products since 1956. And it is a family owned business. The current chairman of the board is uh, Roberto Sacconi. And they manufacture and design their equipment in Brescia, Italy. Now, Brescia is about 30, uh, or I would say an hour and a half from uh, uh, Venice, but unfortunately, it's also only about 30 kilometers from the hottest red zone in Italy with this damn virus. Hmm? Yeah. So, uh, uh, production is 
still taking place. We're still producing at a little slower rate, but we're still producing. And we have plenty of inventory here in the U.S. right now. So uh, currently we have no inventory issues, even as well as we're selling right now. Uh, you know, we still have plenty of inventory and we expect that to uh, continue. And this gives you a quick feel for our global footprint. So we have uh, offices on uh, five continents, if you will. Africa will be next. And the, 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 again, their equipment is, is all over the world and, and has a lot of uh, excellent feedback. And I'm going to talk about warranty uh, shortly, but I uh, just wanted to give you a feel for where we are and what we do. So the product that we are most proud of and we feel will be the best suited for the uh, North American marketplace is what we call the Maestro product. So in the Maestro product, we have two units currently available. We have the Maestro Smart, which is a single stage compressor. So on, off, on, off. It's a PSC motor compressor. Basically, it's a uh, rotary style compressor, PSC. It has PSC outdoor fan and indoor fan. Now, uh, the unique thing about this unit is it has very little impact on the outdoor uh, build, building. So uh, the building's facade. In Italy and in most parts of Europe, you can't put a window unit like this or a split system on a wall outside. They, they just won't allow it. You'll be fined extensively and forced to remove it. So because it destroys the architectural ambience of the building. Yeah. So our unit is completely self-contained. And uh, as you can see, uh, it can be installed in the, let's look at the upper uh, right-hand picture. This is the only thing you see on the outside wall, are two eight-inch grills. Now, depending on your application, you might also have a three-quarter inch hole for a drain as well. Although the drain's not required in all cases, and I'll explain that a little bit later. Uh, but so this unit was installed, the, the one that I've currently got circled was installed uh, below a window. So when you look on the next picture, you can see that this has three systems on each floor. And those are installed above the window or high on the wall. Mm -hmm. So the here is you can install this equipment. It has to be an outside wall. It, the wall can't be any longer than 39 inches in depth, nor can it be can you add any elbows or uh, bends to the duct? So it has to be a straight shot from the inside wall to the outside wall, or inside of a wall to the outside of an outside wall. So, uh, you know, that being said, let's move on. So again, Italian design, they use what they call the Pure System 2, uh, there's three different filters that can be used, <clears throat> and it's very easy maintenance. So if you look at the design here of the unit, you can see it's very low profile. It doesn't come out from the wall too far, but this is a completely self-contained unit right in this area right here. Uh, can you see my cursor moving? Yes. Okay. So right in this area here is where the compressor is. But when you hear this unit running, you cannot hear the compressor even if you put your, your ear next to it. Okay. This unit is as quiet as a air handler for a mini split. And it has the compressor and condenser fan located inside of it. So that's rather impressive. The maintenance is quite easy because all you have to do is clean the filter. <clears throat> and then once a year, you should have the unit serviced where the coil gets cleaned and the drain pan gets cleaned. But on a regular, like a consumer level maintenance, uh, it's just opening that flap and removing the filter or filters if you choose to use all of them. Mm -hmm. So upper left hand corner here, you see the remote control that ships with each unit. And the remote control is in Fahrenheit only in this, in, in this brand, in the, in the smart. So if you had a customer that insisted on having a Celsius remote, if you will, or a remote that, that displays in Celsius, that's an accessory that can be ordered, okay? okay? If you look in the upper right, 
It is a patented design, again, in Italy. But the thing that's unique about this unit is no one in the world has anything like it. So if you can get your architects and engineers and designers to get this type of unit uh, spec, then you have no competition. Nobody's going to come in and say, well, how about, because nobody can meet the design criteria of this unit in terms of how it mounts and how it uh, quiet it is. So my guess is, having worked for a manufacturer in the past, I happen and, and I've worked on a, any number of uh, unit designs from cradle to grave. And I know that to develop a unit like this would take any manufacturer a minimum of two and a half to three years. That's and that's assuming they don't make any shortcuts. Anybody that tries to design from scratch and and produce a unit in less time than that usually regrets it in, in ways than one. The other thing to keep in mind is if you look in the lower right hand corner, these are sound ratings. So the top number STC is sound transmission class and the bottom one OITC is outdoor indoor transmission class. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with those terms, but they're used most often in the US in large cities where the concern is if you impact the outside wall by cutting a hole in it, how will that impact the occupants as regards increased levels of noise that transmit from outside to inside? So as you might imagine, cutting a hole in that will allow people to hear horns loud, you know, very louder than before, or hear, you know, people or hear buses or hear whatever you can hear in a city, right? Uh, so the higher the number, the better. Now, STC, sound transmission class, 36 is the absolute highest number achievable. So no one currently makes a unit that reaches that level other than Olympia Splendid. The OITC, our unit is rated at 25. There is no way anyone can get higher than a 25. Now, someone at some point may equal it, but they cannot make it better. So those numbers are very, very impressive. And what they basically say is, if you cut a hole in the wall to mount this unit, there will be zero impact as regards noise coming from outside into the space. So in my view, that's a very, very good uh, sales feature that you can use when you're promoting the product is, you know, you're not going to have to worry about, like if you put in a PTAC, you've got this big, massive hole in the wall. And uh, in fact, uh, Amana produces a marketing piece for their PTAC that basically says we have such great sound ratings. Our STC is anywhere from 29 to 31, not even close to ours. Their OITC is anywhere from 19 to 21, again, not close to ours. So uh, that, that's a competitive advantage. The compressor has a seven year compressor warranty. There are two years of warranty on all parts, but if a compressor fails in the first year, you get an entirely new unit. The only thing that we would ask is that uh, the unit that has a failed compressor be returned to me or be returned to uh, a local service center that we would designate. And a service center would essentially be, in Italy, they're called service centers. In the US, they're called contractors, right? So, or, or dealers. So we, you know, if you have dealers in mind or contractors in mind that you think would serve well, you know, we can qualify them as a as a service center and then call them an authorized Olympia Splendid service center because we any unit that fails, we want to know why. And to give you an example, every manufacturer uses a uh, what we call a sales to warranty ratio. And what that means is that the lower that number, the better your product, the quality of your product is much better, the lower that number can be. So the number consists basically of three criteria. How many parts have failed within the first 30 days of a unit's install? How many parts have failed after one year of install? And how many parts have failed after five years of install? 
so those three numbers are, 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 are combined and massaged to create a, a, war a sales to warranty ratio. Again, when I work for York International, if we had a sales to warranty ratio of less than 2%, we thought we were geniuses because that is one heck of a good number. Now, the goal is always zero failures, right? But anytime you have something mechanical and you also have human hands that touch it, there's going to be failures. But if the failures are few and far between, that means your warranty is and your, your product is, is good quality. So again, 2% is considered acceptable. The warranty failure rate or warranty to sales ratio for the Maestro product, and by the way, there are almost a half a million of these units around the world already installed for up to 20 years, okay? That's when this first hit the market in Europe and Asia was uh, almost 20 years ago. So the warranty, the sales to warranty ratio is 0.002%. And, and I can tell you, that is phenomenal. So very few manufacturers, US-based manufacturers can hope to be, I mean, this is hundreds of times better yeah. than other manufacturers seek to achieve. Mm -hmm. So uh, rather impressive in my view. So let's talk about how they get installed. And this is one of the features that this unit is, is very well received for because the installation is, I mean, typically an installation can take an hour and a half and you're done, start to finish. But it depends on your construction uh, materials and all that. But the unit ships with everything required for the installation, every single thing. And I'll explain the one thing you may have to change, but that's depending on what your wall is. So the first thing you do is you position the drilling template on the wall. So this is a 36 inch by 24 inch uh, uh, heavy duty piece of paper that gets mounted on the wall where you want it, your unit to, to, to be, okay? And again, it must be a wall that communicates with the outside. So there's a look at the template that ships with the unit. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is you see an, an eight inch hole here, right? So it's mm -hmm. an eight inch hole here, and then you have the same thing over here. So you require two eight inch holes in the wall and they have to both be eight inch. However, let's say you have a geometric constraint, a physical impediment that doesn't allow for the eight inch duct. So you can choose alternately to run to 6.4 inch ducts, okay? Now the recommendation is you do that only when you absolutely have to, because when you have a smaller area through which a smaller volume through which the uh, air can go in and go out you you suffer some capacity and some uh efficiency loss it's it's not crazy but it's it's measurable and so you only use the smaller holes when absolutely necessary and here you see the area for the uh the three quarter inch drain line and on the on the pro unit which is the one we're going to talk about next, the drain line comes out over here. So the pro, that's the, one of the uh, differences between the pro and the smart is basically the, everything else is identical. So if you had, if you had a, a pro unit, a, a smart unit on the wall and you want to make it a pro unit, you just take the, the, the smart off the wall, you drill your, you know, change the, the, the whole location for your drain and it mounts on the same bracket and, and no harm, no foul, plug it in the wall, you're done. Okay. All right. So next, after you have uh, cut your holes, now you have to uh, install the duct. Okay. So the, basically, the duct has to be installed so that it is. Uh, it basically directs the air into the unit and out of the unit, not into the wall cavity or into the space. So the duct work, and this is the bracket, by the way, that the unit mounts on back here that was put on according to the holes that were in that template, okay? And then the duct, you, you cut to the thickness of the wall. So let's say your wall is uh, eight inches thick. You would cut your, the length of your duct about six and a half inches. So about an inch and a half short of 
the exterior, and, and then it goes into the grills and the ring, okay? So this is the ductwork that ships with every unit. It's basically a piece of composite plastic that is flat, and there's two of them, and then you just cut it with a razor knife to the thickness of your wall, less about an inch and a half, and you just roll it up, just like you see here, and uh, you put a, a tape on the top of the seam, and you put a tape on the bottom of the seam, and you keep the seam in the top, not the bottom, but the top, and you put it into the hole in the wall. And, you know, I always tell people, use a good tape to, to put, but, you know, the, it, once it's in the wall, it can't open up and go anywhere, so it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Although, again, using good tape prevents you from having any leakage. So now after you've installed the duct, now you have to install the grills and the rings. Now, uh, the rings uh, and the gr the grills itself, let's say you're doing this on the first floor of a house. Well, no big deal, right? Especially if it's gonna be a low wall. You can just walk outside, put the grill on. But if you're doing this on the second floor or in a commercial application, it's the 22nd floor. Yeah. You don't wanna go outside and put up a scaffold or you know, uh, rappel down the wall to get to where you can put the grill on. So these grills are designed to fold in half. Now you attach springs and chains to these grills, and then you pull them into uh, the wall, and then you're done outside. So here's the spring and the chain and the clips that go onto the unit, or, I'm sorry, onto the, uh, the foldable grill. So then you put these on there and you're holding onto the chains and then you, you, you fold the grill in half, you stick it out through the hole, you release it and it opens up again instantly because it's spring loaded. And then you pull the chain tight and boom, you're done. Okay, you, you are finished outside. Now, earlier I mentioned that it shifts with everything you need, right? Mm -hmm. So here are the uh, mounting hardware for the unit. But this is based on a, a either you going directly into a stud or, you know, this kind of uh, anchor is more for concrete, right? So if you're not going to be able to uh, put this into a stud, then you would want to buy uh, like butterfly bolts to hold the unit in place or to hold the bracket in place on, on say, if it's just a sheetrock wall. If you put three or so uh, butterfly bolts on there, that unit's never going anywhere. It's going to mount on that bracket and be there forever. But it's up to the installer to validate that what they have, their wall, you know, that they have to use the correct materials to mount. The unit weighs 88 pounds, so you just want to make sure that whatever you're putting it on, 88 pounds is not a problem. So here is the grill and the ring, okay? So the grill goes on the outside of the wall, the ring goes on the inside of the wall, then the spring and chain go between them. And, and if you see this little uh, clip here, okay, just see a little white piece there, well, then I covered it up, but you see down here, that's where the chain attaches to. So when you pull the chain tight and you pull the, the grill to the, uh, directly against the outside wall, it, then you just attach the chain to that little nub there and uh, you're done, okay? So quite simple indeed. And then on the bottom here, you can see the bracket, okay? Now just quickly to point out, when we talk about the Pro coming up, we don't go through the installation of the Pro because it's the same as the Smart, so no point in doing it twice. But this bracket is what you'll get with a Smart unit. With a Pro unit, you get two clips. They're heavy duty metal clips. Uh, but they're not a long bracket like you see there. So uh, again, you have to make sure you mount those clips in a way that will the wall will hold that 88 pounds. So every unit ships with a remote control and you can see in the upper left, there's a door that opens up that gives you access to more of the modes of operation and settings. The, the, on the back of the remote, it, there is a removable cover because it takes two AAA batteries. And I mentioned earlier that this is Fahrenheit only. 
So if you need Celsius, it's an accessory that you have to order. And then the plug, because this plugs into a standard 115 volt outlet. So you plug it into the wall and boom, you're done. The plug is a standard 115 volt. And as you can see, it is a GFI. So it's designed to shut the unit down if there's overcurrent or any impact on the overall circuit. So if you look at the installation instructions, it will tell you the factory recommends a dedicated circuit for the unit. It does not say you must use a dedicated circuit. It simply recommends it. So what that means is if, if, if you have a dedicated circuit that's 15 amp circuit, for instance, and this is the only thing that's on there, you're not going to come close to uh, tripping a breaker, right? But if you plug this into a wall outlet, and unbeknownst to you at the time, uh, they also have two refrigerators on there on that same circuit, well, something's going to give. It's going to, you know, that circuit breaker or that GFI are going to trip. So, uh, you know, just, go ahead. How long is the power cord? Uh, I believe it's six foot, six foot. So again, it, you know, you can use a, uh, a good extension cord is not a problem. These units draw about uh, eight and a half amps, okay? So if you've only got a couple of other lights or something on that circuit, no problem with that 15 amp circuit. But if they, again, if they have high watt items on there, then you may have to move something or run a dedicated circuit. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Now, what if you have a glass building? That's not a problem. This is an actual job that was installed somewhere, I think, around Toronto, where they uh, sourced an eight-inch grill that is kind of pl clear plastic with the same uh, free area as the grill supplied by the factory. And then they uh, created a composite material, white material, to mount the unit on. And if you look at the right-hand picture, you see a finished result there. And uh, it, it, like I say, I think this job has 12 of them on there, and everybody's happy because it serves the need without completely destroying the ambiance of the building by having yes, the the out there. That. You're saying the customer source that stuff, right? Well, correct. So, in other words, we don't have this as a kit, uh, but we, we certainly know uh, what, what materials are needed and, and what to uh, what you can expect as regards, uh, uh, you know, say the cost of this grill where it was sourced. So, anytime you have an application question, I'm the guy that you should be talking to because my background is in the service and sales and application side of the business. So if you have an, an application that's, you know, outside of the norm and you need something, you know, outside the box to solve that or to provide a solution, that's my job is to help you with that. So never hesitate. Don't pass up on a job because it looks like it's uh, a little uh, out of the, uh, the specs that the unit calls for because sometimes adjustments can be made. And, and as long as it makes sense where it's not going to cause the unit a problem or the consumer a problem, then we'll, we'll, we'll put our heads together and find a solution. And this is basically showing you the air going in and out of the unit uh, and also the condensate that's being pumped up onto the coil and then allowed to drain out normally. Now, the only thing I want you to know, keep in mind here is that this is showing you, th this graphic was produced during the first 10 years of this unit's ex existence. And so on the older design, if you're looking at the unit from the outside, looking at the grills, the air intake was on the right and the air exhaust was on the left. And then uh, on the current model, it's the opposite of that. Everything works the same, just it's opposite from the older unit. And then here's just a quick graphic of the grill and the spring and the, and the uh, ring being tightened and, and, and drawn close uh, to, the, to, the, to the wall, and it holds that grill very tight against the wall. And when you cut your holes into the wall, there should always be a slight pitch from the inside to the outside, pitch to the outside. 
That way, if any water was to get into the grill because of a driving rain or something, it would just run back out again. This is an actual job that we ran into that had failed where the contractor decided to use a different grill than what we supplied and it didn't work out in his favor. Because you can see the free area of this grill and the free area of this grill was did not match that. So he actually had to take those off and, and change them. Uh, but we are currently working with two grill manufacturers to uh, get us a either two rectangular grills, which some people like, it fits into their building better. So it'd be a, you know, a rectangular for the intake and a rectangular for the exhaust. But I might also get one that is a full, just one rectangular grill that covers both intake and exhaust. So we're looking into that as well. The other thing we don't recommend is that they install a mesh or filter in the duct because yeah. this result, you can see here, all this buildup was because the consumer never cleaned it, never had it cleaned once a year. And of course, this didn't take long to because you can see how small the holes are. This did not provide the same free area as, as we would like. So I'm currently working with a manufacturer of, of uh, mesh and and uh, trying to get something that would be closer to what would make sense for us so for instance in in texas you have little crawly things and uh so some people might be concerned that those little crawly things are going to come into the into the unit but one of the things you want to be aware of is uh, well actually there's two things one is the outside air is a completely sealed separate uh chamber than the inside the root the air that's in the inside so there's no way for any critter or bug to make its way into the space they could get you know die in front of the coil or something but they can't get into the space it's simply not possible yeah however if we if we are looking at a, a mesh that will have let's call it a quarter inch opening that will give us the free area we need. So it'll keep out most of the bigger things and the little things, uh, you know, that's something that you clean the coil once a year anyway. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, if you, I, I mentioned earlier that this unit can be installed four inches from the ceiling or four inches from the floor. And depending on uh, what, it comes from the factory set up for low wall application. So if you put it in a top wall application, you have to take the uh, baffle out and reverse it so that if it's a top application, you want the air coming down, not going up and just hitting the ceiling. So when you go from a, if it's gonna be a high application, high wall, then you have to make that adjustment. And then the drain, first of all, let me explain a little bit about the drain. So the unit has two floats in it. Float A, if you will, uh, is a lower float, and it's a normally open switch that closes when the condensate level rises. When it closes, it turns on a pump, and that pump takes the condensate and, and pumps it over the evaporator coil to where it helps reduce the, uh, it increases the efficiency, if you will, uh, of, the, uh, of the unit as well as its capacity. But in doing so, it then evaporates that water, which then exits the building through the exhaust. So in the summertime, it's very rare for you to see any condensate coming out of the out of the unit because it's all evaporated. Okay. In the wintertime, however, if you're using it in a heat pump mode, that's a different story. We cannot pump the water or the condensate onto a coil. There's no benefit to that. So in the winter months, that pump is disabled. When you go into heating mode, that pump cannot be energized. And uh, you would have to drain, you know, for defrost that water out. So you can just stick it out the window or stick it out the uh, wall and, and, and let it drip outside. Or if you have access to a drain in the wall uh, or in the house, then you put a little trap on there. So there's water remains in here and you don't get fumes that back up. But either way is acceptable. Now, the third option for some people, and 
in the in the units that we saw at the very beginning that were on the wall, you saw the outside facades of the buildings. There were no drains in any of those because their temperatures in the summer aren't humid enough to cause them to do anything but evaporate that water. And in the winter time, they don't have enough moisture that it builds up and has to defrost uh, on a very regular basis. So they will actually leave both plugs in the unit. And if in the winter, for, again, in the summertime, it's not a problem. It all gets evaporated or most of it gets evaporated. But in the wintertime, if enough condensate builds up, it turns off the unit by the second, the second uh, float is a normally closed switch. So when the water rises to that level, it opens and shuts the unit off and gives you a code saying block drain. So at that point, all the consumer has to do is open up a door on the bottom, pull out the plug and just drain the water out. And then put the plug back in and turn the unit on and you're back in business. Now, most consumers aren't gonna to wanna to do that on a very regular basis. So if you think you're gonna have enough condensate in the winter, then you probably should run a drain somewhere other than outside, if it's an area where you can have temperatures below, uh, say, uh, uh, 41 degrees, because water actually freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, as we know. But when you have air movement and a temperature in the in the low 40s, like it's possible that you'll get uh, frost buildup, okay, and you could block that drain. All right, that is actually a stopping point. That's virtually everything you need to know about the uh, the smart unit, how it installs. Uh, we're not gonna go through all of the features and benefits because we can't do all of that in an hour. Uh, but when we leave here today, in addition to you getting access to this uh, presentation, uh, I will also be giving you a file that you can download where you can have all the specification sheets for all the equipment I'm talking about. You'll also have a copy of this PowerPoint presentation. You'll have wiring diagrams. You'll have uh, parts lists and pictures of parts. So I will be giving you everything uh, in one zip file. Any questions here? All right. Then we'll move on to the Pro. Now, earlier I told you the Pro was uh, well. I told you that the Smart was a PSC motor, single stage, on off, on off. The Maestro Pro is a very recent design, just released in 2019, and you can see it has a more contemporary look and feel to it. Uh, it has the same STC and OITC numbers, so no one can match them, but it's also inverter driven. So it's inverter driven on the compressor and on the outdoor fan and indoor fan, those are, uh, P, I'm sorry, those are ECM style motors, okay? So all three of those can be controlled to any speed that the controller on the unit feels is appropriate. So the inverter driven unit can go from 35% to up to 100%. And it does so based on what we call a PID loop, which is proportional integral derivative. And that means it looks at how far am I from set point? What is the rate of change at the current speed I'm running? And how long will it take to reach my set point? So the goal is always to reach the set point using as few watts as possible. So the unit will be anywhere from 35% to 100%, depending on what's needed at the time. And there is, of course, a silent mode and a night mode as well. And again, here are some of your features and benefits that you'll see and functions that you'll see in the, uh, in the specification sheet, okay? And as you can see down here, it says that uh, we can also have Wi-Fi ready and Bluetooth and an app, but that we are currently beta testing that right now, and I expect that to be completed probably before uh, 
the end of this second quarter. So uh, all of those things will be available shortly. Now the remote control, which is the user interface, the smart unit is either Celsius or Fahrenheit. The pro unit, you just hit that bottom right hand button and it'll go from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Or hit it again, it goes from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So the user can determine how they best want that unit to operate. And then uh, all the icons that can be displayed on the remote are identified here. So, and again, this is in the installation instruction that comes with the unit. So you can see what each of those symbols mean just by matching it to its, its letter and number combination. This is something we're quite proud of is we're just ready to release our retrofit kit. So uh, there is an awful lot of, there are an awful lot of PTACs installed throughout the country. And many of them are reaching that 15 to 20 year range, which means it's time to replace them. But a lot of people don't like those loud, clunky uh, PTACs that are noisy and they're just not attractive. So you can do, you can take the existing PTAC and, and you pull it out of its sleeve. Okay. Then you're going to install this six sided box or, or cube, which will be made pre-made. And I'm going to, Escape out of here for a second and go here. I'm going to go to accessories. Oh, well, that's not the right one. That's the right one. So basically the uh, PTAC retrofit kit is nothing more than inch and a half duck board and it comes shipped broken down and then you just fold it at the seams and put metal tape on there. Okay. Yeah. If you scroll down here, of course, that's just showing you with the uh, the back is taped in place. And up here, you see the it's uh, that six sided cube ready to be. So basically, you're leaving that uh, PTAC sleeve in the wall, shoving this box in there, and then you're going to cut the holes in the box based on the template. And this uh, piece of paper comes with it because it talks about you know personal safety when working with duckboard and then how to use it. So that kit will be available in two sizes, both uh, the 32-inch and the and the 26-inch, uh, or, or I think it's the uh, 26 and, and 42. I forget the exact numbers, but the older PTACs were shorter. The newer PTACs are longer. And, and for the most part, there's just two sizes out there. Do you folks do much with PTAX? Well, <laughs> not anymore. We, we used to. We had we've had manufacturers in the past. We we don't have Gree anymore. We had PTAX with them. I can tell you that one of the things that we've ran across is that, like when we were representing Gree, they were selling them. You know, we could sell one or two units at a time to a customer, and they were transitioning to only offering it in container load quantities. So there will be because it was the only way they could be competitive. Correct. Right, 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 right. So there are some availability issues with PTAX at times. So the goal here is if somebody needs to replace them, and there's a thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of these PTAX out there that are ready to be replaced. So you can then sell them a, leave. you'd leave this exterior grill in place and the sleeve in the wall. Then you take our kit and you shove it in and uh, now you have three inches of uh, insulation duckboard that does very good with sound attenuation as well as uh, noise, I'm sorry, and, and as well as uh, temperature uh, protection and insulating R value. And, and it's very easy to, be, to do. So uh, I think you'll find that to be another easy sell. Yeah, and actually be an upgrade instead of just a me too. Exactly right. And okay, so this now the pro 
we went over some of the features. I showed you the unit. We talked. So the Pro is a inverter driven product that can go from 35% to 100%. It has uh, 11,600 BTUs of cooling, 10,600 BTUs of, of heating. The Smart, again, the single stage model, is 9,212 BTUs of cooling and 8,600 BTUs of heating. So uh, that's the differentiator there. And in fact, the Pro uses less watts than does the Smart. Even though the Pro is larger and has more capacity, because of the inverter technology and the ECM motors, it uses less watts than does the Smart. So are, do you know if there's plans to add more sizes or anything like that? Yes. Like so, a, are they going to yeah. come up with a nine in that or no? The factory is currently Look, uh, developing uh, a 15 and an 18. Okay? okay. Now, of course, when this unit was first designed, it was going throughout Europe and Asia uh, for the last 20 years. The size of the homes there in Europe and in Asia it, uh, are considerably smaller than here in the United States. So, you know, we have higher requirements for for heat loss and heat gain. And so the factory now recognizes that, and they are developing a large, a couple of larger units. I would tell you though that it's only in the early stages, and because of this virus, our R and D facilities are not functioning because that requires people in to be in a lab. Uh, so I don't expect to see those two sizes until. Uh, the end of next year at the earliest. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, we're going to have only these two sizes for probably, now it could come second or third quarter next year, but having worked for a manufacturer before, I know that the timeline someone gives you for the release of a product is mm -hmm. an estimate, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we were curious because obviously like what you were talking about, you know, James had mentioned before that even some of our hotel rooms are pretty big, you know, so. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. These units like the Pro, we tell people that depending on where you are and where your market is, the Pro is good for 425 to 450 square foot, and that's a nice size room, you know. Okay. So, but if, when you need more than that, we have to go to either two units or, uh, again, someday we'll have the, the larger ones. And do you guys intend to offer the pro in the nine the smaller size or, or did you not do you intend to keep that well there's no intent to do that right now because let's say you install it in a smaller room that's only 250 square foot mm -hmm. it's never going to run more than 35 or 40 percent you know uh, so it'll be oversized but mm -hmm. because and, and oversizing is not a good thing to do in most cases yeah. But when you have inverter-driven technology, the units are much more forgiving of oversizing than standard equipment. And, and I know this because I sat on the committee that helped write Manual J and Manual D. So I'm very familiar with those formulas and how to create you know, a load calculation and how to size ductwork. And, and uh, again, because these units are as small as they are, uh, they, they pack a good punch for as small as they are. So, uh, you know, it's completely off topic, but uh, because of the install procedure and also being an Italian company, <laughs> have y'all ever thought about a wine cellar application? I know you'd have to change some of the. Well, setting. you know, the, the, the Olympia Splendid makes a great deal of many products, okay? And, and I don't know if they have a wine cooler, quite frankly, or not. I mean, we make portables, we make, they even make uh, uh, espresso machines. <laughs> but, okay. uh, you know, that's a different uh, requirement because, in, you know, in a wine cooler, you have your, your, your primary goal is moisture control yeah. and your secondary goal is temperature control. And, and, uh, 
So it's a completely different animal. But so I don't know that they have that as a as a goal uh, because the need is not as great as as that for heating and air. Everybody wants heating and air conditioning, right? But not everybody needs a wine cooler. So it depends on how much volume you think you can get. You know. Yeah. Well, plus, I think that a lot of times a, a wine cellar might not have an exterior wall above ground. Too. Another good point. That. Another good point. Yeah. All right, let's look at some products that are coming down the road. And again, when I talk about these products, keep in mind that they're being delayed at least probably one, if not two quarters, uh, further than originally anticipated because of you know, the design and uh, engineering teams uh, not at full strength because they can't go into the office. So the ne one of the things we want to have next is what we call the Maestro Twin. And what that is, is the same Maestro unit that mounts on an outside wall, but then you can twin it with a indoor, uh, where, which could be on an inside wall, okay, uh, fan coil. So you're just running refrigerant lines and electrical line from the where the compressor is on the on the unit that's on the outside wall to where the fan coil unit is very similar to having say uh, more than one uh, air handler on a PTAC you know PTACs you can get you know one outdoor unit and two indoor units or one outdoor unit and four indoor units uh, so we think that's going to really help the market where you have a, an area where you can have uh, not just all your capacity in one room and hope you by, by uh, convection uh, that you get uh, your other room hot or cold. So th this will, I think, serve a nice uh, niche in the market. And then we do an, we, we're, this B2 air design uh, is relatively new for us, and but it's it's taken off like wildfire in Europe because it's very low profile and essentially you can put it high wall low wall wherever but it's very very quiet okay and you can see in dimension d here that despite whatever capacity size you're trying to achieve the depth of the unit is only 5.1 inches so uh very uh small impact into the room if you will And again, you can have forced, uh, you know, radiant heating with forced convection, radiant heating with natural, or cooling with forced convection. So you can have a single cooling coil in here. And again, this is assuming your building has chilled water and or a boiler. So if you just are concerned with uh, temperature for cooling, you can put in a single coil in here uh, that would accept the chilled water from your system. Or if you have a chiller and a boiler, you can put two coils in here, one being heat, one being cool. And now you have excellent dehumidification control because you can uh, set your, your flow rates such that when you go into dehumidification mode, you remove a lot of moisture, but you, you basically have neutral, sensible change to the temperature of the air. And, th and that can be very, very helpful. And here, just seeing a few more dimensions for the uh, for the smart. And then we also have the B2 Naked. Now, the B2 Naked is uh, a, a unit that can be uh, put into the wall so that the, the wall is basically flush. The only thing you see on the outside of the wall is this uh, flat metal grill. Okay. And then. You and also, uh, you know, high wall or low wall. So in, in, in this upper left, it's just a low wall application. And in the lower right, you see it can be completely enclosed into a soffit and where you have return air here and supply air here. And then, of course, we have some kits uh, available for that, which are recess kits. Uh, the panels and uh, telescopic plenums, that sort of thing. And then the controls include an on-off button on the on the control pad itself, 
You can also, it comes with the remote control standard, and then you can also get a display panel that will allow you to connect to Bluetooth and it's Wi-Fi ready. So uh, that's, that's available now. And this is just kind of showing you a breakdown of the coils, where all the different components are. So uh, that's the B2 line. And like I say, it's a very successful one for the, uh, for the company. And uh, we, we are very excited about offering it here in the U.S. And uh, we've got some folks in a number of cities that are uh, chomping at the bit for us to get inventory on this. Any questions there? I forgot to ask. On the on the B2. No, I don't think so. All right. So the last product I want to talk about is the Dolce Clima. And the Dolce Clima is our line of portables. And what that means is uh, these units are designed to just they, they're on rollers, they can roll across the room. You stick the uh, a duct out through the window, and you can solve a single room application very easily can be used for residential or commercial. And also a lot of our contractors that we've been dealing with in the US are buying these like 10 to 12 at a time. Because what they're using them for now is, let's say they go to a consumer's uh, building or, or home and the compressor's failed and the system's gotta be replaced, but I can't get there to do it for three days or three weeks. Yeah. So I, I, I include in my cost to replacing your equipment the cost of renting three, four, five, six of these things. And then when I when I repair and get your, so now you've got heating and cooling, uh, but when they go back to actually do the install on the main system, they just take those remotes back with, or those uh, portals back with them and, and uh, they're all set. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have three sizes. We have the uh, 10,000 BTU, model and there you see some of the specs and all of these units come with a three-year warranty on, on parts and compressor and then this is the dolce clima pro which is a 14,000 btu heat pump and again i i didn't get time to finish updating the slide but this five-year warranty was not correct it's actually three years okay so the unit is 14,000 btus of Cooling, 11,000 BTUs of heating. Again, you just plug it in the wall. Actually, I think I forgot the point. So if you look here, this is the, uh, in the, in the right-hand side, this is the kit that comes with the unit that allows you to mount a duct into, basically you're raising the window up and you're bringing it back down onto these components. And then the, the, the duct goes from the unit to outside. And this is the Air Pro 14 AC. So the prior one was a, a heat pump. This is cooling only. And again, when you download uh, the file that I will send you, it will have all the latest tech guides and spec sheets and installation instructions, wiring diagrams, all of those things uh, will be. Uh, a part of this file that I send you. So that's pretty much the products that I wanted to offer. And, and again, this cell phone number is my, rings directly. It's my cell phone. And, and uh, the 800 number I gave you earlier, you could use that as well, but it just rings to this line anyway. So uh, well, people are getting number for when I have additional staff, when we, when we need it, then we can, you know, direct those calls. But any questions on any of the products we talked about? Nope, you did a good job. Well, and, and again, I wanted to show you one other thing here before we go. We all know that, that uh, let's see. Uh, I wanted to show you. Let's do this. Uh, 
So one of the things I've done, I mean, I was stuck the whole month of April in Florida thanks to this uh, uh, coronavirus thing. So I built a demo that basically is just an, a unit mounted on a wall. And so this, the front of the unit just looks like the inside of a house of the demo. And then the back of the unit looks like a outside wall. Okay. And it took me, well, I was doing it by myself. So it took me longer than normally would anyone, but uh, the total cost, including the tools I had to buy was $360. So if you get into this product to where you're going to be, you have customers that want to go to trade shows with it. And, you know, this is a, you know, this allows them to have a fully functional unit that they can show. And, mm -hmm. and with, you know, of course I detailed the whole construct. And of course I designed this as I was going along. So yeah. it took me, I'll just scratch my head all the time, but the end result I think came out quite nice. And like I said, it can be built for under three hundred fifty dollars. I'm so, if you already have all the tools, it's probably under three hundred. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I de I detailed everything that I did, and uh, as you can see here, I in, in the front of the unit it just looks like a plug. In the inside of the wall, I have an extension cord. So the extension cord goes to the bottom. And then it gets plugged in, and now you have a fully functioning unit. Okay. And then uh, you put the springs on. As I was talking earlier, there you see the springs and chains. Okay. You put it through the wall. I also have a drain coming out through the bottom, and I just put a little pan there uh, so that it'll capture the condensate if you're operating inside a, a building or a customer's place of business or something. Okay? And then I made the walls out of two by six because then I could take all the materials that are not being used when it's being transported and just put them in the wall. So yeah. the back of this wall has four thumb nuts on it, okay? And then the back wall comes off. You put all your spare parts and things inside the, the cavity, and then you put your wall back on. And you can see these brackets here. These brackets are designed so when the back wall comes off, you take the screws out of those brackets, and the, top, the, the wall comes up comes down now you have it's a completely flat assembly in fact i drove th this is the whole thing broken down the unit is not on there of course the unit only doesn't transport with with the uh, the, the, the demo but i drove that from uh, claremont florida to virginia and then just put it back together again gotcha. one of the things i did was there's a little hinge door here so if you've got this at a trade show or something, uh, you can lift up this hinge and, and there's a plug there and you can charge your phone or your iPad or whatever. Sounds pretty good idea. You know? Yeah, oh, that's a good idea. Well, like I said, you know, some people, uh, we actually had one of these built for us when I first came on board that we used for a bunch of our trade shows. And it cost us uh, to have somebody else build it. Oh, it was $2,800. Yeah. Wow. So if you do it yourself and you can do it for 300 bucks, that's not too shabby. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So that's it folks. That's everything I wanted to chat about today. Uh, I can also show you if you want real quick, uh, let's go back to the Maestro Smart. And uh, one of the things you'll get with your uh, this file, okay, is a parts list Wait a minute. Uh, an Excel file, and it has all the parts. Okay, yeah, we can break down. Exploded view. And then you can just go to the number to find the part that you need. Okay. Yeah. And then I also have, I'm not sure why I'm not finding it. Oh, here we go. So all of our parts are currently stored in our warehouse in, in uh, New Jersey currently, but to your benefit, everything's going to be transferred and our warehouse will eventually be with our headquarters will be in the Dallas area. So all of these uh, parts, will be very near to you. But if, if you start selling this product and somebody, your contractor walks in one day and says, hey, I need one of these uh, dangly things here, you know, 
Uh, okay, you just match it. I took every part and and took a picture of it in front of the bin with its part number on it. So if they bring you in this dangly thing, you say, oh, that's the uh, coil for the valve, and there's the number. Okay, so that you'll be you'll have in that kit as well. That's useful. Yeah. All right. Well, like I said, I, I hopefully uh, look forward to us doing some business. If you have a contractor that gets a lot of interest and you want to do another webinar with them, all you have to do is give me a call or drop me an email and I'll look on my calendar and do it at whatever time makes sense for you and your customer. Yeah, sounds great. So next week you're not coming in to do a, you're here because you're coming in for your family, not because you're coming in for some job or something like that, right? That's good. Well, actually, you know, it's, it's a family thing for uh, Monday through Thursday. And then Friday, I'm driving into Dallas from uh, Norman, uh, and I'll be meeting with Diego. But again, if you folks had a customer that you wanted to visit, I could certainly fit that in on Friday. You know, yeah, uh, I do if you already had a some kind of job you were working on. It would be a good opportunity for him to see something that was already in progress. But that's what we were trying to figure out: is that if you were already doing uh, that. Uh, well, I, I would love that to be the case. I just don't have one in the Dallas area right now. Uh, in fact, because I had to come back unexpectedly from Florida early, I missed an opportunity to film uh, some installs that took place in Florida just this week. And and uh, But we've had, I'll tell you, one of the other markets we're doing quite well in is Alaska. So in Alaska, they get about a month a year where they want cooling, and we're they're just buying these things like hotcakes for up there. So we've done quite well with those. And, you know, what I do, like, let's say you get an installer or you get a contractor that says, you know, that looks pretty interesting. I, I think I have a perfect application for one or two or ten of those. We should do a one-hour webinar with his install staff because yesterday I probably spent a total of three hours on the phone with a technician that was installing one down in Florida who had never been through the training, and he had lots of questions. But had he gone through the training first, he would have had questions so i right. strongly encourage you to to you know when you're going to sell something to somebody for, now currently with that demo i just showed you uh, when i get back from this uh, uh cross-country trip uh i'm using that to make a multitude of training videos that will be anywhere from five to 15 minutes in length okay, okay. how yeah. do you install it how do you do this how do you take the the, the cover off how do you do that you know, make all these little videos, and then your customers can look at those as well. Yeah, that's yeah. good to have little short ones. So uh, I'm about to become a movie star. Go <laughs> <laughs> way down on your phone call. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, like, one of the things is I take all the calls for service uh, across North America. So if it's in Canada, the U.S., uh, Mexico. Uh, I take all of those calls. So I get very few calls. When I get a call because of a problem, it's usually uh, how do I, I need help with the install or my unit is dripping water in the house or my unit's not running at all. And then I look, if that's the case, you probably have a blocked drain. So, or a dirty coil. So clean the coils, clear the drain, and then call me back if you have a problem. I never hear back from anybody. Gotcha. So, because they, they, again, it's a very, very good product. Yeah. All right. Well, we are eight minutes over our hour, so I apologize, but you had some good questions and we covered a few extra things. So, uh, hopefully, you have a, enough understanding of the product now to uh, uh, to feel comfortable with going out there and, and uh, putting it in front of your customers. Yep. Ready to go. Thank you. And then, like I say, tomorrow, if not, it probably won't be today. But because it takes about two hours for this thing to parse itself to where I can publish it, but the video will be made available to you, and I'll probably send you in the morning uh, a link where you can download the, the you know, where you can go watch the video or and download that file I talked about. Yeah. Okay. All right. We appreciate you getting on here and showing us this yep, stuff. Yeah, taking time on a Friday to do it. It's good. No, listen, 